As an engineering student, I come across a lot of math, and sometimes it can be really pretty. So, here's some pretty graphs. Hopefully part one. Now the first graph we're going to talk about is called the conchoid. And you can see that I'm going to graph it in Desmos on my screen. Desmos is a great free graphing software in case you didn't know, and you can follow along and maybe find some more pretty graphs of your own if you want. I don't know. So if we plot in polar coordinates, r is equal to any constant times sec theta, just gives us a straight over line at that a coordinate. To get a conchoid, we just add a really small constant to it, and that gives us two really slightly weirdly curved lines. Now that's interesting in itself, but when we adjust that a value, that happens. Pretty cool, right? We could go into the mathematical detail, but that's not really relevant right now. All you need to know about is that it's pretty. Apart from just being pretty, the conchoid is also useful in a lot of real-world applications. For example, hip implants are modeled after conchoid graphs to get the fit perfectly right into the sockets. Conchoids can also be used to determine the positions of stars for astronomy and astrophysics. Fancy. Next, we're going to talk about this trig function that's on your screen right now. It looks scary right now, but when I graph it, it's pretty. As you can see, the base function just gives us a lot of these slightly squashed circles. Now that's cool, but look what happens when I add in something. It just breaks! Isn't that insane? I'm not even sure why that happens, it just does, and like, that's really really cool. We can also muck about with it by adding some constants. So if I add a constant a here, for example, and put a slider, you can tell that it just produces more circles. And if we put it the other way, to a zero value, they just become perfectly straight lines. Strange, isn't it? Well, what if we replace this constant with a variable? Now we've got a strange, not quite sine curve, but rather a serpentine curve down the middle and smaller bubbles on the sides. If we change the value slightly to include the other variable as well, why? We can see the serpentine kind of spawning those circles. Not sure why, but weird and pretty. Next up, and this is what you clicked for, the devil's curves. On the surface, they look fairly simple, just two hyperboloids. But when we throw in some constants, we see them become straight lines. That's interesting by itself, but look what happens when I change the constants. It spawns strange infinity-like patterns in the center that, if we put our constants on the extrema, can almost form this circle. Now, what does this have to do with the devil? Well, nothing. The truth is, it looks like a toy called the Diabolo, which sounds like Diablo, which means devil. And there you have it. Applications of the devil's curve include image processing and compression for video. So what you're watching right now may very well be a result of this equation. Next. Let's look at Fermat Spiral. Once again, it's a really pretty curve, which I've graphed over here in polar coordinates. As you can see, adjusting the value of this constant changes the tightness of the curve. In fact, if we pull it really, really tight, you see this almost strange pattern of concentric circles that get closer and closer as we go further away from the origin. An interesting fact about these concentric circles is that patterns in nature seem to follow a similar pattern. For example, sunflowers and daisies have spirals within them that follow very, very similar ratios. Fermat spiral also has applications to solar panels. Arranging panels in this spiral shape can lead to perfectly concentrated solar power that can be used to maximize the energy efficiency of solar installations. Similarly, you can see NASA adopting this pattern 
in one of its origami solar panel structures. Fermat's spiral is now literally out of this world. Another equation that looks similar to Fermat's spiral on the surface is the lattice. The lattice is named after an ancient Roman weapon and resembles the shape of a tool used by shepherds in ancient times. Unlike Fermat's spiral, the lattice doesn't curve continuously. Instead, it eventually approaches a perfectly straight line. As we make the value of the constant a really, really small, we can see the lattice simply approaching a straight line. This makes the lattice a powerful tool for engineers when designing traffic management, and the lattice is often used as a model to design highway intersections and to keep trains flowing freely on their tracks. An interesting question you could ask is what would happen if you took a lattice and combined it with another lattice? Well, the curve you get is called a clothoid. We can't quite graph it in something like Desmos, but you can look at it and admire its prettiness regardless. So there we have it. It's five pretty curves, conchoid, some strange nested trig functions, the devil's curves, Fermat spiral, and finally the lattice. I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, like, share, and subscribe. You can click either of the two links on your screen to watch some more fun videos. Thanks, and keep watching.